how to get the absolute best quality with ControlNet 1.1. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? So there's a new version of ControlNet in this video. I want to show you how to install that, but also I want to show you the best methods. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that. Shout out to my Discord community who was super helpful. You are amazing. So of course, the first thing we need to look into is to install this. For that, you want to go to your extension tab. Now, there is two ways Ways. Either you already have ControlNet, in which case you want to go to the Install tab down here. You click here on Check for Updates and then you click here on Apply and Restart UI to update this. We still need to download the new model files though. And you can also see down here now it says ControlNet version 1.1. Now, if you don't have installed that already, you still go to the Extensions tab, but this time you you will go to the available tab. You click on load from to get this list here. And in that list, you want to look for the SD Web UI control net extension. And you want to click on the right side on the install button for that extension. Wait a couple of seconds until this has installed. And then again, you want to go to installed. You want to check for updates so you really get the newest version. And then click here on apply and restart. Now, at that point, I would highly suggest to you to close your command window because we're going to restart that so everything is loaded, everything is working correctly. Before we do that, you want to download the models for the new version. And for that, we are going to go over to Hugging Face. I have the link, of course, below the video. And here you can see ControlNet version 1.1. And we have a lot of models here because ControlNet has become super extra powerful. And to download them, you want to click here on this down pointing arrow and we're going to download this into our automatic 1111 folder in there into the extensions folder and in there into the SD web UI control net folder and in there into the models folder here. Another thing you will see here is that there is a lot of these YAML files. Now when you install or update this extension they should actually download for you if you don't see see them in here. You can also download them from here. Now let's have a look at ControlNet 1.1. So when we scroll down here a little bit, what you can see is that we have a huge list of possibilities right now. And of course, over here, you have the fitting list of a lot of models here that you can use. You have allow preview. So to get this preview here on the right side, you want to make a check mark here. And then to get to the preview, View, you need to click here on this little explosion icon here in the middle and this will then render your preview of that map. This can really help you to get a good grip on the settings you have here on the model you're using. So this is very, very useful. The other thing here is pixel perfect. Now what this is doing when we unhook this, you can see we had a slider down here for the pre-processing resolution, which means how much resolution is used used to create this map here on the right side. And you can set that by hand. You can experiment with that as this is helpful for you. But Pixel Perfect will choose it on its own based on the resolution of your input image and also the ratio of your input image and then can be used in an ideal way for rendering your images with ControlNet. Now, one thing I would highly suggest to you is when you use these images, when you download them from the internet, from pages like Unsplash, Pexels, things like that, you want to reduce them in size beforehand a little bit because if you have a really huge resolution here, this processing of the map will take a longer time. So you can actually reduce this to 1,600 pixels on the long side or even lower than that. Of course, to use all of ControlNet, what you have to do per tab here is that you click here on enable because otherwise control that is not going to be used. So if nothing is happening, check for this if this is enabled or not. 
Before we go into the best models that I'm going to show you today, here is some other things you need to check out. So below that we have the weight. This is how much the control net is influencing your prompt, your image that you're going to render. And then right next to that, we have the starting control step and the ending control step. So you can actually see this as a percent value. Zero is zero percent, one is a hundred percent. So for example, if you slide this down to zero percent, Point three, that means that only the first 30% of your steps are going to be rendered with the control net and then afterwards is rendered without the control net. This can enable you to have more freedom while still using the control net input. So you want to experiment with that. This can really give you very nice results. Below that, you can also see for the control net guess mode, we now have three different buttons, but you can also see that now the guess mode is basically always on and it says balanced or my prompt is more important or control net is more important. So experiment with that, which of the inputs you want to have or simply leave it on balance if you're unsure. So it's balancing between the control net and your prompt input. Now let's go to the magic that the new control net can create for you. And the first one is open post, which has become much more powerful because now it does have different modes. It is now split up into a face mode, a face only mode, a full mode and a hand mode. Now here are the examples. This is the input image. This is the output image. First, we are going to look at the face mode. And with that, you can see that we do have a dot mask of the face, but we also have the stick figure of the body. When we have the face only mode, you can see that, of course, in that case, we only have the dot mask of the face. Now, the benefit here is that the body can change. So it can be in another configuration if you only want to have the positioning and expression on the face but want to change the body or you're going to use, for example, another map with a different body position, but the head is in the same position, but has a different rotation that can be, for example, also very useful. The next mode is the full mode. Now, what this does is that it creates the dot mask for the face. It creates the lines for the body and it also tracks the hands. And then there is also a hand mask. Now, in that case, I feel like this is a little bit of a missed chance here because this is tracking the hands, but also giving you the stick figure for the body. So right now, there is no way to only track the hands without the body. That would be great to use it, for example, in a second or third control net layer. Now let's go back here into Automatic 11.11 to see how to set this up. So on the left side, you have the preprocessor with this pop down menu that you can click and below that you have the different modes for open post. So you want to decide here which of them do you want to use. In most cases, I would suggest now that you're using open post full because this will track everything at the same time. On the right side, of course, you want to select the right model for that that has to fit to the input model on the left side. So in that case, you will see here that you have now all these models that have at the start V1.1. So you need to use one of those, not the old models. So down here, you can see we have our V1.1 version of the open post model. So we're going to load that in here and now everything is ready to be used. So let's have a look on how this turns out in the process. Now, because this is not tracking the glass in the hand, I had to write holding a whiskey glass. And then also I had to write smiling man, because even though we have these points in the face, it couldn't really decipher that this is a smile and wouldn't create a smiling expression. So I added that. And at the end, it did actually track that very nicely and create that smile. Now, what you can also see in this case here, although, is that the hand tracking, even though that we have this hand here with the watch on it, that is actually nicely and clearly visible. The tracking did not work in that case, which really surprised me. But for the hand that is holding the glass, the tracking actually worked really nice. And the hand is in a fairly complex position, but still it has been created in a rather nice way that makes it believable that the character here is holding a glass. One thing that's also interesting here is if you have legs or 
your arms outside of the photograph so it's not visible when you track that with open pose the stick figure is not picking up on that at all and actually removing the leg so you can see down here these lines go to the hip and then just end there's nothing there and of course because of that now we have to replace that by random positioning of the legs in this case i would say that the result still looks pretty good so there's no problem with that before i show you the next amazing trick let's have a closer look at the open pose face tracking so here you have two different modes one is face the other one is face only as i showed you before face only only tracks the face face does track the face and the body position for that we still use the same control net model control versus 1.1 open pose so there is no change in the model and now let's have a look at the results that we are getting here because these are amazing what you can see here is this dot matrix and the interesting thing here is that this is also tracking where the eyes are looking now from the lines here you can see that these lines are connecting to the eyes so this is the eye position this line that is going over here the pink line that is the ear position and then down here we have the shoulders and when we have our render input it's amazing that the head rotation the head position but also the tracking of the eyes is the same as in the original image so that is really stunning and the quality is absolutely beautiful i'm using here the model ref animated version 1.2 so as you can see already with just the open post tracking you can get mind-blowingly beautiful results but now i want to show you the upscaling the new resampling that you can do with open post so what i'm doing here is to set up my text to image render as usual with my prompt negative prompt and all of the settings now of course you want to generate here until you find something that you like here's an interesting thing to get really high quality this might just be a fluke but it really worked for me so instead of sending this to image to image what we are going to do here is to send this to in paint so when we are in in paint over here you will not paint any mask in here just leave that empty down here you have your settings for in paint mask you want to use mask content original you want to use in paint area whole picture and then set up all of your other settings for the width and the height you're going to set the double resolution so before we had 512 by 768 that means now here we're going to set 1024 by 1536 now here comes the tiling you want to go down here to control net you don't need to load any image in here for this to work and in the preprocessor you want to select the tile resample this is at the very lowest end of that list and for the model you want to select the control net version 1.1 tile map you want to of course again activate pixel perfect and down here you have the down sampling rate so what this is doing is it is reducing the quality of the input image it's down sampling it so here you have several examples of that i'm going to show you and they are for the value of a down sampling rate of two three and four now the benefit that you're getting with this is that now the control net has less information in the map and because of that has more freedom to render different details but of course that also means that the result you're getting is different from the input image you have in the details now of course another setting that is really important here is the denoise strength i would suggest you go with a setting of 0.5 and see how much you like the result if you want to have something that is closer to your input image you want to set this to a lower value for example 0.3 if you want to have it this is further away from your input image you can go higher for example 0.75 or even one which will still give you an image that is very similar to your input image but still has a lot of changes in them so what we're getting from that is a very high quality of the output from this upscaled render so here on the screen i'm showing you this is the original input image now in comparison 
This is now an upscale with the tile resample method. And here you can see one that is using denoise strength one. It looks amazing. I find that the details look even crisper, even have more details in there. But the problem here is you can see, for example, the color of the clothing has changed. Now, another thing that I want to point out to you here is if you, for example, get this problem you see right now on the screen where you get these crazy red eyes, you want to put into the negative prompt red eyes to pull that down and get a natural color again for your eyes. Another thing I want to suggest to you is really important is don't use face restore in this because that will take away from the quality of the face it will it make more blurry and less detail so in most cases you want to use this without face restore although you can certainly experiment with that. Now, of course, ControlNet 1.1 includes a lot more things. So I want to invite you to check out this link for the nightly blob. And here you have a lot of information. First of all, how to understand the file name. But when you scroll lower down here, it describes all of these different methods in detail, what they do, what kind of result to expect from them, what they are used on. So for example, here you have a normal map that is used for a room so there is a lot of interesting things to learn from here and I want to show you one last thing that's kind of goofy a little bit crazy in here and that is called the shuffle mode so on your preprocessor you want to select shuffle and of course for the model you also want to look for the control version 1.1 shuffle model again because we are in image to image or in paint you don't need to load an image into control net this is loading it automatically from your image to image input and now it's bending and shuffling around the content of that image you can see here how that looks and what it does is that every time you do that you get a kind of different version of your input image and that can create more variation of the same image that's it for today my friends leave a like if you enjoyed this video it really supports my channel and see you soon bye Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.